Imagine fighting a war, risking your life day in and day out, only to find out that the battle you've been fighting ended decades ago. Sounds unbelievable, right? Well, brace yourselves. Today, we're diving into the incredible tale of Hiru Onoda, the soldier who fought World War II for 29 years after it ended. The early life of Hiru Onoda. How did a young man become a 30-year jungle warrior? Meet Hiru Onoda, a man who took never give up to a new level. Born in 1922, Hiru was the fifth of seven siblings. Imagine that household, never a dull moment. Hiru's family had a knack for military life, and the young chap decided to carry the torch. At 17, Hiru went from working at a trading company to enlisting in the Imperial Japanese Army. Yep, from boardroom to battlefield, quite the career pivot. Training came next, and boy, was it intense. This wasn't your run-of-the-mill boot camp. We're talking elite commando schools. Haru specialized in guerrilla warfare and intelligence gathering. If there was a jungle, Onoda could survive it. If there was a secret, he could uncover it. That's how skilled he was. But here's the kicker. In 1944, his superiors sent him to Lubang Island in the Philippines. His orders? Live on coconuts if you must, but don't surrender. Who knew those words would define the next three decades of his life? How often do you hear about a guy willing to live off coconuts just to follow orders? What pushes a guy like Hiru to spend nearly 30 years in a jungle, still believing in a war that has long ended? Hold that thought. Before we unravel the life of this astonishing soldier, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. So let's get back. A command to never surrender, the order that defined a lifetime. Did you ever have a job where your boss asked you to do something that sounded crazy? Well, let me tell you, Hiru Onoda has an order that would blow your mind. When he landed on Lubang Island in the Philippines in December 1944, his superiors gave him a straightforward yet daunting command. Do not die. Continue fighting and leading your troops. Live on coconuts if you must, but do not surrender. Living off the land, I know what you're thinking. Did he eat coconuts? You bet he did. Living off the land wasn't just a survivalist daydream for Hiru, it was a stark reality. He and his small band of soldiers had to become one with nature to survive. They hunted, fished, and yes, cracked open coconuts to keep themselves alive and fueled for the fight. And let's not forget all this while assuming that World War II is still in full swing. Mental resilience. So why did Hiru follow this command so religiously? The answer lies in his indomitable will. Once Hiru set his mind to something, turning back was not an option. Just think about it. Maintaining the commitment to stay in a jungle, disconnected from civilization. Leaflets were dropped, messages were conveyed, but Hiru thought it was all a trick. He refused to believe the war had ended. That's right. Every attempt to inform him of the war's conclusion was dismissed as enemy propaganda. You have to admit, that's some next-level skepticism. Understanding Hiru's commitment to his command gives us a gripping glimpse into the human psyche. It shows us the staggering lengths people can go when they truly believe in something. The Band of Four, how four men became a jungle family. Have you ever been on a team building trip that lasted almost 30 years? Sounds nuts, right? When Hiru Onoda was deployed to Lubang Island, he wasn't alone. Alongside him were three other Japanese soldiers, Yuichi Akatsu, Shoichi Shimada, and Kinshichi Kozuka. Together they formed the Band of Four, a tightly knit squad that believed they were fighting for Japan long after the war had ended. Jungle shenanigans. Imagine sharing a small space with three other people for decades. You're either going to love them or, well, not so much. In this case, the band had to learn to coexist in a hostile environment. They devised creative survival strategies, from trapping to crafting makeshift weapons. Sometimes they'd hunt together, and sometimes they'd argue about rations but the gang always stuck together. It was like an episode of Survivor, but on steroids and lasting for years. The desertion of Akatsu. Okay, fasten your seatbelts, because here's where the story gets spicy. Yuichi Akatsu decided he had enough of the jungle life, and in 1949, he went rogue. Imagine that one day, you wake up, and one of your pals decides to leave the jungle gang. He left, lived separately for six months, and finally surrendered. Can you guess what happened next? The remaining three believed this was all part of enemy tactics to deceive them. Seriously, talk about denial. The bonds that break. Fast forward to 1954. Sadly, Shoichi Shimada was killed in a skirmish with a search party. 
Kinshichi Kozuka held on until 1972, but met a similar fate. Onoda was the last man standing, still refusing to believe the world around him had moved on. So there it is, a jungle adventure like no other, filled with friendships, betrayals, and a level of commitment that's hard to fathom. A stranger from Japan, the man who tried to bring Onoda home. Have you ever thought about convincing someone that they're living in a past era? Tough job, isn't it? Now meet Norio Suzuki, the adventurous Japanese man who ventured into the Philippine jungle in 1974 with one goal, to find Hiru Onoda. He wasn't a soldier or a government agent, he was just an average guy with an extraordinary mission. The world's most unusual friendship. Imagine you're Hiru Onoda. You've been hiding out in the jungle for decades, and then this guy shows up. Suspicious? Definitely. But lo and behold, Norio did the unbelievable. He befriended Onoda. They talked, laughed, and discussed life. Onoda, however, remained steadfast. His orders were not to surrender, and he intended to obey them. So what did Norio do? He respected Onoda's convictions, but made him a promise. He'd return with proof that the war was over. The intriguing backstory of Norio Suzuki. You may wonder what drove Norio to undertake such an audacious curiosity. Well, this isn't your usual story of a man merely wandering into the wilderness. Norio Suzuki was a globetrotter, an adventurer at heart who had an actual bucket list. His list was not your typical run-of-the-mill goals. It was unique and daring. He wanted to find a panda, the abominable snowman, and yes, Hiru Onoda. When Norio set his sights on locating Onoda, he was fully aware of the risks. The Philippine government had declared Lubang Island a combat zone because of the presence of a soldier who still believed he was at war. Yet, despite the perils and the warnings from the locals, Norio was undeterred. Armed with a backpack full of supplies and an unbreakable spirit, he headed into the thick jungle. What's astonishing is that it took Norio only four days to find Onoda. Can you believe that? Four days. The universe seemed to align for these two extraordinary men to meet. Two men bound by different beliefs, but connected by the shared curiosity and courage to pursue the unbelievable. The mission back home. After spending quality time in the jungle, Norio trekked back to Japan. He was on a new mission to bring evidence to convince Onoda. Why did he care so much? The story had struck a chord in him. He was passionate about giving Onoda a life outside the jungle. Norio returned to the Philippines, but he had a secret weapon this time. He carried photographs and documents, but the real kicker? He brought Onoda's former commander, who formally relieved him of his duties. And guess what? Onoda finally believed him. So isn't it fascinating how an ordinary man changed the course of an extraordinary life? It makes you wonder what you'd do in Norio's shoes. The return and the reckoning, Hiru Onoda's unbelievable homecoming. Can you imagine being away from home for 30 years, then returning to find everything changed? Hiru Onoda did. When he set foot in Japan in 1974, it wasn't the hero's welcome you'd expect for a soldier who'd fought for so long. Japan had moved on, and so had the world, facing the modern world. Adjusting to civilian life is challenging for veterans, but Onoda's case was unique. He'd missed out on three decades of change. Instead of riding horses, people were zipping by in sleek cars. Phones are no longer heavy boxes. They fit in your pocket. It was a whirlwind of new experiences for Onoda and a bit overwhelming. Would you believe he even had to learn what a Big Mac was? The emotional toll. Returning after all those years, Onoda struggled with loss and bewilderment. How could he not? He had been following orders for 30 years, thinking he was contributing to his nation. Coming to terms with the reality, that the war had been over for decades was a hard pill to swallow, making sense of a lost war. As the years passed, Onoda worked to find his place in society. He wrote books, gave talks, and even ran a nature camp for kids. But underneath it all, there was always that question. Was it all worth it? The reckoning was personal and profound. Yet somehow, Onoda found peace, reconciling his long-held beliefs with the truths of a world he had left behind. So there you have it. One man, one order, and a tale that twists and turns like a jungle vine. Do you have your own Onoda story where you felt stuck in time? Share it. Leave a comment below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this deep dive.
And remember to subscribe for more jaw-dropping tales that'll make your grandma's war stories look like fairy tales.